not sure why the order skipped there, but anyway. Um, Taoiseach, uh, the NESC have done quite a lot of work on good employment, um, the area of good employment and what it should be. Now, I've raised with you on a number of occasions the fact, as have others and advocates in this area, in the area of arts, of film, uh, cultural workers, and so on, where there's a distinct lack of good work, sometimes legally required under things like Section 481 film relief, where there's a legal requirement for quality employment, uh, but NESC point out it's not defined. Now, I just want to give you a couple of instances of where you need to do something about this, because this is public money, okay? I watched a video last night of a film worker uh, with other film workers protesting outside the location of the Valhalla shooting by one of the biggest recipients of public money, uh, somebody who'd worked in film for 40 years uh, and who is not working now on Valhalla, had worked in all the previous Vikings uh, 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 films, uh, but not working because he said he was blacklisted along with other workers because they had pointed out at a joint Oireachtas committee back in 2018 uh, that in fact all this public money was not leading to quality employment and training, that there was actually virtually uh, no proper jobs or any sort of job security or any pension entitlements for workers in the film industry. And these workers are being blacklisted uh, from working. People have worked for decades being blacklisted and structurally they are allowed to do this because the producers tell the government, oh, this is a, a film to film thing you can't have security of employment uh, and, the, and the Department of Arts and the government allow this to continue when in fact EU state aid rules insist that public funding for the arts must be linked to creating a permanent pool of secure employment uh, even if it's uh, 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 you know film to film that there should be security should be pension entitlements there should be recognition of the service who work in the industry similarly with performers I pointed out with you on the enchanted film, you have this uh, phenomenon now of buy-out contracts where producers say you will only get a job, this is for actors and performers, you only get a job on our film if, we, if you agree to sell off your rights to what are called residuals, royalties on future uh, performances uh, of that movie or f uh, film, okay? Something that all, uh, actors and performers used to enjoy and now producers are saying you don't, get, you don't get to work for us unless you agree to a buy-out contract and of course the artists are performers want a job, so they go, okay, well, I better accept that, right? It's absolutely wrong. Those buyout contracts shouldn't be allowed, uh, and the Department of Arts needs to stop, uh, ensure you don't have blacklisting, you don't have workers in that vulnerable position, uh, and they have a right to recognition of their service uh, in, the, in the arts and uh, cultural area, and that they have some sort of security of employment so they can't be made vulnerable to blacklisting uh, or whatever it might Thank be. Thank you, Deputy, uh, Deputy Boyd Barrett referenced good employment and he has been focused on the section 481, the film industry. And again, I would say the, the, the issues that you've raised, I, I think there perhaps needs to be a social dialogue framework um, around this particular industry in this particular sector. It's not um, one that, that's out. used to engage with that. I'm just making the point. You um, should respond. Terms, this is a, an industry that's very mobile. Uh, there are clearly challenges in the modern era in respect of it. Uh, individuals will need to be consulted as well in terms of their uh, desired outcomes, but I don't believe there should be any blacklisting of individuals who take a stand or who have a particular perspective on issues. That should not happen. Um, and um, I can see the complexities around security of tenure, pensions and so on. I don't think it's as simple as articulated, I, but, but that said, uh, you know, workers need rights even in, 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 in sectors that are more challenging um, th th than maybe the traditional conventional approach. But, uh, the balance then between facilitating investment inwards and film production and, and, and industry uh, has to be weighed up as well. So I, I'm open to the best avenue to pursue this. Uh, Deputy Murphy also spoke about the work experience programme. I think activation works, Deputy. I genuinely do. Uh, I don't believe this is about suppressing wages at all. Uh, I think actually from the experiences of having talked to people who availed of job experience programmes uh, and, and there's the, the, the funding here is higher than anything to do with job bridge and it's voluntary, uh, but it has led to permanent employment and career development for many, many people. And many young people can often rightly say, I don't have experience in a given area, 
these programs do give you that experience to enable you then either to pursue the career in that particular firm, because these are short-term duration experience programs, they're not open-ended. And therefore, they do provide a platform to enable people to get the skills and experiences that they can apply to get more permanent jobs. Um, so I think the work activation works. They have proven to work um, in, in, in the past.